this edition of OpenSCAD DIY 3D Tech.com. In this episode, um, we're going to be looking, I'm going to show you how to use OpenSCAD in a 2D mode. So a lot of folks know how to use OpenSCAD, you know, for 3D modeling and that, that kind of stuff. But you can also use OpenSCAD for laser cutting and um, CNC. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the video. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work on building both a gasket and a flange for this dust collector project I'm doing over on my other channel, DIY3DTech.com. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to laser out a gasket and then we're also going to build a flange to connect to uh, the bucket top because what this does is uh, goes on top of a five gallon bucket top that goes on a bucket what happens you know when the dust comes in here from the uh, CNC it hits this sidewall loses velocity and gravity is supposed to pull it down the tube into the bucket while the clean or semi clean vacuum air comes out this the top to to the vacuum um, Anyways, the so pretty basic concept here. So we got a couple parts that we're going to build. This episode, again, we're going to focus on the 2D aspects of a gasket. Uh, we'll cut out a gasket on the laser cutter um, using craft foam to adhere this to the bucket. Now, one of the things a lot of people just put silicone adhesive around here. Well, the piece is I want to keep this flexible. So if I want to take this apart, I want to change the bucket top or something happens. I don't really have a big mess down here with a bunch of silicone adhesive stuck down here and have to clean it off. Um, and it's just a lot cleaner build having a, having a nice proper gasket. And the other thing I want to show is, is how do you make a gasket? Actually, with a laser cutter, making gaskets are very easy to do and um, makes for a lot cleaner project. So not only if you're doing this or another project where you need a gasket, I want to show you how you can use OpenSCAD to make the gasket. The second piece is we're also going to go to the CNC and we're going to, we're going to machine a counter flange to go on this. And again, I want it pretty sturdy because this is going to add some height and as well as some torque from these these openings um, that hoses are going to attach to on the bucket so it's going to torque here so I want to have instead of just four small number eight bolts um, intersecting the bucket top I want to be able to have um, a bigger flange down here that's going to distribute the pressure you know across the bigger area and be far more stable and be less likely to break both this top uh, this flange piece as well as the you know stress the bucket top so anyways let's um, jump over to the computer and let's look at some open SCAD code see you over there welcome to this edition of open SCAD in this episode we're going to be working on a flange for our dust collection system for the CNC router and one of the pieces I want to show is the versatility here of open SCAD because what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy over here and we're going to print him on not only the uh, CNC to do a plastic version but we're also going to utilize the laser cutter and also uh, cut a gasket out based upon the same model as well as on top of it CNC out the top of our bucket so um, but before we get there one of the things I want to take a look at here is some of the uniqueness of this project so one of the things that I, I you know if, if you're in the maker community one thing that you're always doing is creating a flange of some sort or, or another and especially creating gaskets I find myself doing this on a regular basis so this is one of the reasons that that I, I did this project and also built built it in a, in a parametric uh, automated fashion and what do I mean by that so one of the things that you can see over here in the um, uh, code pane is I specified all the parameters of the flange so if I decide instead of a 110 millimeter flange that I need say 160 boom I've got 160 millimeter flange and I can just change it around and or say I need um, bolt count instead of four I need eight bolts boom I've got eight bolts so I've done this in a way that um, 
I, I can just enter enter my parameters and boom I get out the flange that I want and to do this I've come up with a couple um, neat things that I wanted to share that that you can use in your own programs uh, to create similar so uh, you know number one is it's all parametric so that's a good thing and it all kind of scales to one another and part of it is uh, if you really look at it there's not a lot of code behind this so there's because there's really two ways you could do this there's you can do this in a code sense where things are placed by code or you could actually code say your your bolt pattern holes and that's that's what we have down here and and I wanted to show this for an example so what a lot of people may do is just kind of take the you know easy way out and just kind of code the four holes versus versus creating this model where we can change the number of holes say from four to eight and then with a push of a button we have the eight holes but how do you do this so one of the things that i've done is i've i've uh, added a circle pattern generator this code right here now don't be too daunted by it I, I left it in a very readable format so you can compress this code down to actually you probably get it in like one line or so if you wanted to but one of the things I wanted to do was kind of show folks how do you do a circle pattern and we'll be working with circle patterns in the future so I kind of wanted to share this so so here you go this is the the for loop which creates the circle pattern and you can see long story short I go from 0 to 360 degrees so each step of the for loop is one degree and I divide 360 by the number of bolt counts I want so if you remember up here it's eight and that's my step and so I know I have to make eight steps if I want eight bolts so dividing 360 gives me that step factor then what I do is I translate that step factor to a theta and I'm using the I'm just using the geometry formula for a circle here and so not too fancy and so I'm usually utilizing bolt spread so how far do I want the spread of the bolt divided by two so I get the radius and then this is the X here so keep that in mind I'm taking the cosine of the theta or the degree which is generated from my for loop so again for loop feeds theta theta feeds the cosine so you can just take this down and say I is theta and feeds the cosine if you want to so hopefully I you know, again if you walk through it it's, it's pretty simple it's basic geometry so don't get too confused I've just kind of left this so you can kind of see the flow and then this the similar for y but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sine of, of 4y so the sine of theta is going to equal y in the same formula now one of the things that you might note is I've left a zero here so this is the offset so if I wanted to offset say these by five millimeters each so let's go ahead and do that you see my my holes over here are now offset by five millimeters each and so this is a great way also, if you don't want to translate um, the, well, you're, you're still doing a translate, I guess, but if you want to build in the, the, the uh, mnemonic for translate into your X and Y rather than implicitly in your translate, as in down here adding to it, this is a great way to do it. It makes it very simple and it kind of holds true to the um, circle geometry formula so for me it, it works out easier this way than tr than adding to the translate later so uh, anyways just sort of a little handy tip uh, there and again this code is highly reusable now one of the big questions is we, we want to test um, you know does this really is this really working so what I did is I also hard coded in four of the bolts so let's go ahead and see so and I put the um, percent sign in front so we, we see the dimmed out version of it and here you go you notice that the the four bolt holes line up and now let's change this back to four for grins and giggles and boom we have it uh, in four so we've now tested our formula so we know our formula works so this is a good way to kind of check things if you will too to make sure your formula is yielding what you expect it to yield so um, and again if you have a bigger object maybe you do uh, several different tests 
versus you know uh, just just one you don't have to code them all so this is a good way again to test now one of the things that I also wanted to show with this is we hit F6 to do a render so let's do a render of this and then what we do is we're going to do an export and instead of an STL we're going to use a DXF now I've already exported this I have my cut 2d open now what I want to show here is is especially for CNC -ing. so one of the things that I've done is so I've set up my material my material is is two millimeter uh, it's going to be two millimeters thick and it's going to basically be 12 by 12 that's what 304 is and I'm going to use my origin position as the center of the uh, material now this is important because we're going to be cutting out the top of the bucket and I'll show you that later however there's no corner on the top of the bucket so many times what we do is we'd use this offset position or not offset origin position being the uh, forward left hand corner however to a circle there's no forward left hand corner so we're going to take the center in this case and we're going to be working in millimeters and so we're going to say okay and so now we have our working surface plan so what we do is we go import and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, import our thing I need to remember where I Put it well actually I think I need to let my drives refresh um, why don't I see a drive E uh, H I J there we go all right and one drive whoops SCAT and then flange and then so I've got two so I've actually exported to um, one one for the bottom which is going to be a little bit larger and then one for the um, uh, losing my train of thought here uh, for the gasket sorry so I'm going to do the larger one and this is going to be the support and, and if you watch the complete video on the um, uh, on the other channel DIY3dtech.com you'll see me actually assembling this but let's go ahead and let's import it so alright we have now our object from from OpenSCAD and so just kinda go back here and so that's our object this, this is the flange but we've made it a little bit bigger I think I actually in this one uh, have made it uh, 10 inches in diameter so I think we were up around 200 so it looked more like this uh, to provide offset for the base of the cyclone itself however anyway so let's just jump back here so now what we can do is we can we can select these objects so what we're going to do is, is select these objects and if I keep holding down my shift key instead of control key and then we simply add these to a tool path so we're going to want to do a cutout tool path and we're going to want to go two millimeters and we're going to do calculate I'm not going to worry about naming naming everything uh, here and then so uh, I usually like to cut out my bolt holes first then start cutting out some of my larger uh, dependencies and so we're going to cut out the profile and we have that and then now let's go ahead and cut the whole thing out and that will be this operation and boom so we now have um, long story short we have our um, DXF converted into tool pass so from our tool pass we can see this and so what we do is just export the G code so this 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 will work for the CNC now what we'll do and I'll show you uh, as we jump over to the laser cutter uh, long story short there we just import the DXF into Corel laser and we just cut it from there pretty simple and straightforward so now you've gotten kind of gotten a bit of a flavor on how we can use open SCAD for uh, a, a variety of activities rather than just 3d printing so uh, it works just as well so anyways let's cut over to the CNC and laser cutter and let's see how all this actually Actually works in practice okay so here we are we've got the material mounted up uh, to cut the bottom flange out 
for our dust collector project for the bottom of the lid to give it some extra support. So uh, uh, it's, uh, I believe this is a piece of ABS sheeting, so get it rather cheaply off of um, uh, eBay, and it does does a good job. You really can't laser it, but seeing seeing it's not bad. You do got to cut it at at some slower speeds, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead. Let's do a time lapse, cut this up, and let's get building the um, uh, flange again. This was done with the uh, the SCAD uh, DF, DXF template that we created from. Uh, uh, open SCAD. So let's go ahead and cut this. Okay, so we've um, we've taken a look at how we've created the flange. We're going to do the gasket on, on the laser cutter. So I've got the DXF loaded up in here and uh, on Corel Laser Draw, and I'm going to send this to the laser cutter. So apologies for the noise background because the water pump's running, the laser's running, the air compressor's running to power the air assist and all that stuff. Uh, but we're going to take a we're going to hop over to the laser which is behind me and we're going to watch it cut out this gasket so let's hop over there Okay, so here we go. We have our um, our laser cutout gasket, so that we created in uh, OpenSCAD. So again, we've taken now OpenSCAD work to the CNC router. We've taken it to the laser cutter, and so again, kind of shows how versatile it is. Um, the whole thing is so uh, anyways hopefully you've enjoy enjoyed this short little series on, on open SCAD and what you can do with it um, and again it should be thought of just something for you know the 3D world so again the 2, 2.5D world is something that it can also be used for so hey uh, give it a thumbs up if you found it interesting subscribe down below if you got any questions hit me up in the comments and uh, I'll try to answer them so Cheers. See you in the next video.